Happy Sunday, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Elon's Matchup Maximizer podcast, a show presented by Keeping Carlson, where I, Elon Dubrovsky, invite you to join me on a journey looking through next week's schedule of NHL action and finding the teams with the best schedules and then pointing out players on those teams who aren't widely available in fantasy that you can stream in to try to win your matchups. Because, of course, for a lot of people, we're going into potentially fantasy playoffs next week you need to get this right you don't want to be holding players on your team that aren't going to even be getting you games right like i'm gonna go right into it here tuesday thursday saturday on this week of march 13th to march 19th those are three busy days there is a very good chance that you have players on your fantasy teams right now that are going to be on your bench on those days you can't afford to wait okay you're gonna have to drop those benched players and stream in people playing on off days to make sure to maximize and win that matchup do as best you can so we're going to go through all the teams with the best schedules with lots of off days and then i'm going to look like i said players that are available that i think might have a chance to hit based on either their deployment or if they're on a hot streak you know we'll talk it through i got a tweet last week I just want to reference quickly saying that maybe I could be a little bit more prepared for this podcast, you know, come in with picks. I just want to kind of clarify like the point of this podcast. And obviously this show doesn't have to be for everyone. But yeah, this isn't the kind of thing where I'm just like throwing picks at you. Like I guarantee you these are my five picks. And like if you go with them, you're for sure going to win. Like I'm just kind of more thinking of this show as like I want you to join me and see what my process is for deciding who I'm going to consider streaming in. And this is basically it. I look through the schedule. I look at the team's with lots of off days i then look at those teams and and like i said look for players who are on good streaks or getting good deployment and you know as i talk through it i'll be suggesting players that like are especially appealing to me so that's kind of how i do the show and i i definitely understand that uh there's other shows that we do that i do myself that are a lot more polished and yeah i put a lot of prep into the sunday mega show to make sure i have everything all planned out and prepared but this one is more of just you're joining me on my train of thought so with that said like i said we've got a big week coming up so let's just dive right into it here and yeah i'm just repeating myself again but it's important to say tuesday thursday saturday next week are packed we've got 24 teams playing on tuesday 22 on thursday and 26 on saturday like there's a good chance you're full on all those days especially tuesday and saturday uh yeah and meanwhile like usual monday wednesday friday sunday pretty light sunday there are 14 teams playing so not to say that i think you're going to be full on sunday but just more that there's going to be a lot of options there and then yeah monday especially light only three games and then wednesday and friday there are four games so yeah we're gonna have to uh find the teams with these off days and the team with the very best schedule next week is most definitely the buffalo sabers because they're giving you four off day games on monday wednesday friday sunday so you're not going to do better than a player on the buffalo sabers to get the most games from a stream those games are at toronto at washington at philly and then home at boston so not the best schedule like you know three road games i guess maybe they'll be able to score a lot against philly and then like a home game against one of the best teams in the league but still uh this could be a team where you can hit on uh, as far as who is available to you that you're going to be looking at from buffalo unfortunately like we're not looking at like amazing options here like all the best players are going to be taken already you know thompson skinner dylan cousins darlene i'm sure they're all gone probably even over owen power is gone not that i would even recommend him at this point you might even want to look in net to be honest the thing is it's so tricky to predict buffalo goal is like ukopeka lukunen had a game today i'm recording this on saturday night and he played well against the rangers uh lost in overtime two to one uh so i don't know what the plan is they because they could go comry they can go anderson maybe you wait until the monday game is announced like who's playing that game and then assume at least you'll get two games from that goalie so depending on your format maybe two goalie games will be better than four streamer games so just something to think about but if we're looking at streamers okay here's what i'm looking at first of all the the top line since Alex Tuck has been injured for a while, Jack Quinn was there. But now since Jordan Greenway has come from Minnesota, Jordan Greenway has been on that top line with Thompson and Skinner. So he seems very interesting. Of course, uh, the Sabres just lost and they only scored one goal, though it was against Igor Shostyorkin. So maybe they get a break. So I don't know. Like I can't guarantee to you that this is going to last. But I think as long as Jordan Greenway is on that top line with Thompson and Skinner, he's a pretty good bet. He scored a couple games ago in that 10-4 loss to Dallas. Uh, no points today. He had a shot 
got three hits honestly like that points to me is like maybe they're gonna have to shake things up so maybe you're gonna want to wait before jumping on this stream but uh yeah it's a good spot if he holds it Kind of same for Victor Olafsson, who's been on the top power play with Skinner Thompson, Dylan Cousins, and Darlene, which is a really great spot. But unfortunately, Olafsson hasn't been doing much of anything lately. He was pointless again today versus the Rangers. He did score a goal also in the 10-4 loss to Dallas. Before that, Olafsson was like ice cold forever, and I'm seeing it in his game log. Mostly games of just two or one shot. So... It's, it's hard to recommend him. I, I got to be honest to you. Like, I guess he's like, like I said, he's playing on that top power play, but he's also on a line with Middlestat and Tyson Jost that got the least amount of time of the four lines today. Even the Akposo Gergensen's Peyton Krebs line had more ice time. So who, who else is there to recommend? I guess there's Jack Quinn, right? Who isn't on the top line anymore, but he could get back there. And in the meantime, he's playing on Dylan Cousins line along with JJ Paterka. And Jack Quinn was doing pretty good. Like now he's pointless in four. Before that, he went on a little run. So yeah, none of these options are oh, super exciting. So let's keep them in mind. And then we could switch over to some teams that have three off day games. And maybe you're going to have better luck. Maybe it'll be better to just stream in someone who plays three games that we were more excited about than one of these Sabres. But yeah, I guess Jordan Greenway would be my top pick here on Buffalo for as long as he's on that top line. So okay, we've got four teams now who have three light day games. But actually, only one of them has their first game on Monday. And you know, if you've listened to the show before, I always prefer the ones with, you know, those streamer games early in the week, because then potentially you can, you know, get that game on Monday from that team. And then maybe you could drop that player for someone with light day games later in the week, you know, maximize that roster spot if you have multiple ads. So the only team that has three off day games, including one on Monday, is the Toronto Maple Leafs. They go uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then Saturday. So yeah, basically the exact same as Buffalo, except for on Saturday, you're going to drop that person because you're not going to have room for him and you drop him for someone else who plays on Sunday. So honestly, I don't see a reason why you have to like, like for sure take a Buffalo person over a Toronto person if you like the Toronto person better. Of course, the question is, who do you take on Toronto? Well, it seemed like that top six was like super locked in when they got Ryan O'Reilly. But now that he's injured, there has been a new name that's popped up playing with superstars. And that person is, once again... Alex Kerfoot, who has been playing recently on the line with Matthews and Mitch Marner. Unfortunately, kind of like Olafson, a little bit like Greenway, Kerfoot somehow not finding a way to get points, even playing with these guys. Toronto scored seven goals today against the Edmonton Oilers. Matthews, one goal, one assist. Marner, a goal and three assists. Kerfoot, nothing and no shots. Just two hits. And that's all he gave us. So can we really uh, trust him? Like, I love that spot. That's uh, otherwise known as the bunting spot, which got bunting the Calder nomination last year. But I just, uh, yeah, I'm still not going to get too excited about someone who isn't able to produce even with that good deployment. So he's someone to consider if you see the line combinations come out and he's still there. But I don't know, maybe you can do better. But like, unfortunately, who else can you add? Like, then you look, you know, Tavares, Nylander, Bunting was the second line. So probably none of them are available. You know, Bunting is the one that might be available just because he was super cold for a long time. He may have been dropped in your league. So take a look. He's still rostered in 62% of leagues, but I dropped him in one league in my keeper league and he's still out there in free agency. So for next week, I would jump on him ahead of Kerfoot for sure. I think, you know, obviously he's cold now. Now, but there's no reason why he can't you know get hot again so he's someone to consider uh aside from that you're you're starting to look at the bottom six you know uh it looks like nylander did play some time with callie yarncroc and sam lafferty in this game against the oilers i don't know if that score affects or what that is but callie yarncroc is someone who was interesting at earlier points in the season but of course like i say interesting but like in in quotes you know and and he's been okay lately he scored a goal against against New Jersey, not in today's game, but in the last game. Uh, then a couple games before that, he scored a goal against Calgary. So Kerfoot does know how to score. But unfortunately, yeah, I'm just not seeing a super exciting option here on Toronto. Like you look on defense, like do you go for like an Eric Gustafson who somehow still is pointless since joining the Leafs? 
uh, which is very disappointing, obviously, for anyone who had him. And he was so amazing when he was on Washington. You look like a Jake McCabe who's like good for peripherals. So maybe you just want to get a floor guy who will get you games. Then sure, go McCabe. I guess Mark Giordano, you know, not doing much of anything, but also like could be okay for peripherals. So yeah, unfortunately, I'm I'm haven't really hit on a great streamer for you. Probably Jordan Greenway is still my favorite after hitting Toronto. So let's look now at the other three teams who have three light day games. Though, like I said, unfortunately. None of them being on Monday, so maybe you're going to want to wait. But eventually, you'll want to take a look. And maybe the next one to look at is the Washington Capitals, who play Tuesday, but then Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. So especially if you have room for that Tuesday game, that could be interesting. And I do know that there are some players on Washington who might be available to you that are maybe more interesting than the people that we have been talking about so far. I'm going to start with a defenseman right away. Well, okay. First of all, I'm going to start with Rasmus Sandin because he's obvious. If he's like available in your league, then that's crazy that going into the fantasy playoffs, he's been so great since joining the Caps. Another three assists today in the 5-1 win over the Islanders. So yeah, like obviously, like Sandine isn't just a streamer. He's someone you add and you hold for the playoffs for as long until John Carlson comes back. And honestly, at this point, I wonder if they give the top power play back to John Carlson. That's how good Sandine has been. So he's obvious. Uh, but if we're looking at people who are less than like 40% rostered, TJ Oshi jumps out. Another goal today in that win over the Islanders. He's been super hot lately. You're looking at over a point per game over his last nine or so. Uh, Oshi has been playing on a line with Milano and Dylan Strom, and Dylan Strom also had a good game today, so it doesn't seem that exciting, but of, of course there's that top power play that Oshi gets. So if he's out there, he would definitely be my second choice over on the Capitals. After that, though, like even if we're looking at people under 20% rostered, we have some decent options, uh, starting with the aforementioned Dylan Strom, who's also on a hot streak, two points today he had a goal also in the previous game against new jersey he's on a four game point streak he also had three points in that big a3 win over san jose last week so strom is finding his way to get points he's 19 percent rostered so he would definitely be my next choice uh and then as you go down the list uh let me just jump to a defenseman really quickly that i i have to mention trevor van reemsdyke i brought him up on the podcast last sunday and anyone who took my advice and added him they're thanking me right now because I had said how he's great for blocks. He's been all year, but lately, uh, especially since he's gotten on that second power play, he's just exploded like for shots. Like he's like for a defenseman, he's averaging like around three shots per game. Another three shots today in the win over the Islanders, along with two assists. Uh, he also had a goal in the previous game versus New Jersey. Uh, so he's like, you know, getting points now and then. I think he's probably a solid bet for like, you know, in the four games Washington plays this week. I wouldn't be surprised to, to see TVR get two points at least. And then I uh, I think you're going to get like a bunch of shots and a bunch of blocks to just give you a solid peripheral floor. So honestly, uh, I think that Trevor Van Riemsdyk might be someone that's more appealing to me than any of those Toronto forwards, maybe even more than Jordan Greenway over on Buffalo, especially since we don't know if those lines are going to change. It looks like TVR is pretty locked in at this point to be a top pairing defenseman and to also be on that second power play. He's getting huge minutes. He just signed a new contract for whatever it's worth. The Caps like him. Okay, and I like him too. So Trevor Van Riemsdyk, and that's not all. There's other options that you can look at, right? Like if we look, the top line in the last game was uh, Ovi, Kuznetsov, and Wilson. So you can't get any of them, but you also have a line of Nick Backstrom, Craig Smith, and Anthony Mantha. So, you know, Nick Backstrom has been super cold, but he still is Nicholas Backstrom. And hey, he did score a goal finally today against the Islanders. So maybe that unlocks something. And he also is on that top power play. So you always want exposure to someone playing on the Washington power play with Rasmus Sandin. Of course, that's the real calling card here on that Washington top power play. I kid, but you know what I'm talking about. So Backstrom could be someone who's cold, but maybe finally, you know, getting something going. So lots of good options. Uh, Don't take Connor Sherry, by the way. He used to get top six. He's been like, in this last game, he played with Nick Dowd and Nick was Abe Kubel. So as long as that holds, like Sherry's lost all of his fantasy value and he's super cold lately. So it's not like he was even on your radar. But yeah. Um, so to recap, if you can get them, you know, Oshi, Dylan Strom, and then Trevor Van Riemsdyk, I think would be the clear gets. And then Nicholas Backstrom would be my next pick over on the Capitals. So I think there's some pretty good streamers there. Again, they're going Tuesday and then Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. So you'll fit at least three of those games in, if not four. Uh, next up, we still have two more teams that play three times on off day games. I mean, and those are the St. Louis Blues and the Anaheim Ducks. Let's start in St. Louis. 
I'm going to throw another name at you of a guy, kind of like Trevor Van Riemsdyk, who for most of the season has been more of someone you look at just for peripherals, but lately starting to turn things on a bit, and that's Sammy Blay. He just had a really good game today against Columbus, one goal and two assists, along with his six hits, which we know he's always going to throw those hits, uh, but he also scored a goal. I'm talking about Sammy Blay uh, in the previous game for St. Louis uh, versus San Jose. Uh, And he had four hits in that game. Before that, not too many points. But if you look at the St. Louis Lions lately, Blay's been playing with Braden Shen and Brandon Saad. And he's also been getting, I guess, top power play. Like, they're pretty even in terms of the, you know, players there. But, like, the power play that plays with Tori Krug is Shen, Verana, Kairou, and Sammy Blay. And I think Kairou at this point might be your top, like, offensive gun on St. Louis. I guess him or Buchnevich or Rob Thomas. I guess maybe it's pretty even. But Kairou's coming off a hat trick. Uh, a really good game for himself. Obviously, you're not going to get him as a streamer. But uh, I'll take someone playing with him in Sammy Blay. Like, especially if your league counts hits. If that's worth something, then Blay becomes a really nice streamer for you. And like I said, uh, St. Louis, you know, you're not going to get any games Monday, Tuesday. So maybe you could even wait. But then, yeah, come Wednesday, grab him for that Wednesday against Minnesota. Friday at Washington. Sunday versus versus Winnipeg. Um, also, Jakub Verana, or apparently it's uh, Jakub. I saw a tweet recently saying how Jakub Verana really liked it when this, uh, the announcer pronounced his name correctly. So I'll try to do that myself. But uh, Verana did score a goal finally for St. Louis uh, a couple games ago versus San Jose. Today, no points, but he did have three shots. He also had six shots in uh, the game before that San Jose game against Arizona. So Verana is getting much better deployment, obviously, in St. Louis than he did in Detroit, where he could barely get into the lineup. And yeah, he's playing at even strength with Buchnevich and Kasperi Kapanen. So I like that. So Verana, and you know, he's been a goal scorer in the past. I love seeing the shots. Shots generally lead to goals. So uh, I, for points, give me Verona even over Sammy Blay. I, I, I was just interested in Blay because I added him in my uh, categories league where I needed his hits. And then I'm just excited to see the offense all of a sudden coming. But yeah, Verona is definitely interesting and only 17% rostered. Um, after that, yeah, I mentioned a couple other names there, like Kasperi Kapanen is playing on the line also with Buchnevich and Verona, so he could be interesting, and he had a bit of a run when he first got to St. Louis. Yeah, he's uh, only got one assist in his last three games. Before that, he scored in a couple games. And then Brandon Saad, also someone you can look at. He's been playing on this line with Shen. Uh, so, yeah, I guess I should also mention Alexei Toropchenko was playing on the top line today with Kairou and Rob Thomas. So if he holds that deployment, then maybe the torpedoes. I feel like I've seen someone call him something like that. Uh, but, yeah, maybe Toropchenko could be someone interesting. He did get an assist today on one of those Kairou goals. So, yeah, lots of different options on St. Louis that you can go for. Uh, my favorite would be Verona. Or if you need hits, then Sammy Blay. But, yeah, maybe even a Kapanen could be interesting as well. Okay, and then we have the Anaheim Ducks. They always plan off-day games. That's a nice, reliable... Like, I should just name this podcast after the Anaheim Ducks, probably, because I'm probably talking about them every single week. And as per usual, you can't get Zegers and Terry, but you might have access to everyone else. Uh, so Anaheim plays Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, all... Uh, home games against the Islanders, the Blue Jackets, and Vancouver. So at least those last couple games should be uh, potentially plentiful for goals, especially if Columbus is playing Michael Hutchinson. Uh, So yeah, who can you get? We got our general crew. Okay, you can go Mason McTavish. He's got that top power play exposure, playing on a line also with Troy Terry and Max Jones today. So I like it when McTavish is playing with Troy Terry. That's always a good sign. So he'd be my number one pick. You got Cam Fowler if you want D, someone who is on the top power play, as per usual. Another assist in the game against Calgary that just happened a couple days ago. Uh, He's been getting a lot of assists lately. So, you know, I can no longer say that, like, oh, I keep recommending Fowler, then it goes cold. It's been hot like for a decent amount of time. So those would be your top two there. And then you know what? If we're looking like in really deep leagues, like Jakob Silverberg keeps on getting points. He had an assist in the last game. Then he was pointless in the game before that against Vancouver. Before that, he got points in a couple games in a row against Montreal and Seattle. So yeah, for deep cuts, maybe like you take a Silverberg. Even like I'll mention a Brock McGinn who's been playing on the line with Zegras and Ryan Strom. I guess Ryan Strom also. Like anyone playing with Zegras could be good. The Strom's just been so disappointing for so long that it's hard to get excited about him so maybe just a new face in brock mcginn could be something but yeah i I would probably even take a silverberg at this point because he's just been consistent for long so yeah mctavish first and then fowler and then silverberg and then 
Ryan Strom, then Brock McGinn. Okay, that, those will be my top five there on Anaheim. So, yeah, those are your teams with the best schedules. I haven't taken a break yet. I was really supposed to do that. So I'm going to take a break right now, and then we'll look at a few more teams and their schedules next week. We'll be back soon. All right, welcome back to the Matchup Maximizer. So once again, those teams with great schedules that you're going to want to target, Buffalo with those four games, and then Toronto, St. Louis, Washington, and Anaheim. Uh, Washington, to me, has the most streamers that are exciting of teams that give you a lot of light day games. There's still a few teams that play two light day games, which could potentially be something. Uh, Colorado goes Monday, Wednesday, and then Thursday, Saturday. So you could always grab a Colorado guy to start the week and and then move on after that if you can't fit that person in on Thursday and Saturday. So I definitely wouldn't get mad at that. Maybe then you switch over to a Washington player if you can get it. And on Colorado, like you can get, for example, Evan Rodriguez, who in today's game against Arizona was playing on a line with McKinnon and Rantanen. So he was getting that Landeskog spot. I do not hate that one bit. Uh, no points, though. I don't know if it's going to last. They did win the game, but only 3-2, to two, which, you know, you'd expect Colorado to do more against Connor Ingram and the Coyotes. But yeah, like as far as people who are only taken in 10% of leagues, you can't do much better than that deployment. So Evan Rodriguez is someone to look at. Oh, and by the way, did I mention he was also on the top power play for a lot of the game? Uh, I guess did Lekkonen miss time? I'm seeing here that Lekkonen... Uh, was the one off the power play for a bit. And it was McKinnon, Ranson, and Rodriguez, and Comfer. So I'm not sure about that. But regardless of the power play, it's a good even strength spot. And then, yeah, JT Comfer was, like, exciting for a while playing on that line with Rantanen. He's gone really cold lately. And now, like I said, if Rantanen and McKinnon are back together, then that really decreases the value of that second line, which was Lekin and Nichushkin and Comfer, like, decent players. But it was more exciting to get these guys when they had McKinnon and Rantanen spread out. So, uh, yeah, right now, maybe your streamer on Colorado is Rodriguez. Though that could easily change, right? So, uh, yeah, Rodriguez first for now. Then, I guess, Comfer. Everyone else that you'd be interested in is probably taken. Oh, I guess like Sam Girard is always hanging out there on D. He went uh, hot for a bit and still kind of he had assists in two straight games before today's game against Arizona where no points for Girard, but five shots, which is super rare for him. So yeah, if you want to go D, you could definitely uh, get something out of Sam Girard. So that's Colorado, like I said, two off day games, but at least they are early in the week. And then also let's look at the Columbus Blue Jackets who start the week with uh, busy days, Tuesday, Thursday, but then end with Friday, Sunday. So this would be like a patience, you know, start with Colorado, get two games from Evan Rodriguez, then drop him, and then then get your two games from Columbus guys on Friday, Sunday. Or, I mean, we have we talked about other teams that play on Friday, Sunday. But if you're interested in a Columbus player, they definitely have a lot of guys that are less than, you know, 50% rostered that you might be interested in grabbing. Like on defense, you can grab Adam Bogfist, who's been on the top power play, cold again. But, you know, while you're on the top power play, there's always a chance to do something. Today, actually, Nick Blankenberg got himself a power play assist. So you don't have to be on the top power play to get power play points uh, from Patrick Laine's goal. So he's also Someone you can look at. Uh, as far as the line combos on Columbus, we have two lines of significance here. Uh, Goudreau with Jenner and Kirill Marchenko. And then Line A with Roslovic and Kent Johnson. So Marchenko is the most appealing of these guys to me that might be available because he's also been playing on the top power play with Goudreau, Line, Jenner, and Adam Bokvist. So if you could get Kirill Marchenko, he's only rostered in 2% of leagues. He's probably available for you, and for good reason. He only has one assist in his last six games. But with that deployment, you'd think he could be doing, hey, you could watch first Tuesday, Thursday, see how things look. And then, like I said, you're kind of only going to be interested in this Columbus streamer at the end of the week anyway. And then, yeah, you could also look at Kent Johnson, who's going to be a star in the league one day. Uh, but this year, you know, he's been basically just a streamer, though he did have an assist today in the loss to St. Louis and two assists in the previous game versus Pittsburgh. So, yeah, Kent Johnson and Kirill Marchenko are the people I would be most interested in. Jack Roslovic, sure, he's playing with Line A, but like he's let me down too many times. I'm kind of over Jack Roslovic at this point. I may even go Nick Blankenberg over Roslovic and at least get some peripherals there. So those are all the teams that give you at least two now. I've given you every single team that has two, three, or four off day games this week. So everyone else is either one or zero. So yeah, a lot of teams just going with your basic Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. On the flip side, the two worst schedules are definitely Detroit and Florida. Uh, 
Shams and Jeremy talked about both of these teams on short shifts on Thursday. If you're in a playoff matchup, it's a do or die. You might need to let go. Like Detroit at least goes Tuesday. If you have room for your Detroit guy on Tuesday, I guess you can hold on. But after that, you're probably dropping any Red Wing. I, they talked about it, right? So you should definitely check out that episode. It was really good. But yeah, if it's not Larkin, maybe you're dropping like any forward on Detroit after that Tuesday or maybe even before if you can't fit that person in. Uh, Florida... You know, it, it's tricky. They have a lot of good players. Like if you have like a Sam Bennett, do you hold Sam Bennett just to get Thursday, Saturday? If you could stream in, you know, some one of these Washington guys like I talked about, if you could like drop Bennett, get like a TJ Oshie or even like a Trevor Van Riemsdyk and just get those like sure peripherals. I don't know, like four games versus potentially zero. Like you're not even going to fit these people in on these busy days. So it's a really tough decision for sure. And I'll leave it to you. But yeah, you're definitely nervous if you are holding a Florida player or a Detroit player for next week. Though maybe anyone, honestly, of the Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday teams. Uh, like like I said, you're going to want to go and set your rosters and see who's already going to be on your bench because there might be someone who's just getting zero games for you next week because they're on the bench on all the days they're playing. Uh, so that's it for looking at next week. Good luck to everyone in their playoffs. If there's anyone listening here that is still fighting to get into their playoffs and are going to need a great Sunday, March 12th, just to get in. Well, I'm here for you. Let's take a look at a Sunday savior. There's a lot of teams playing today. So there's likely not a shortage of options for you. You're just going to have to pick the right person to get you that win. Like maybe one way to look at it, to be honest, is maybe you just want someone that's playing today and has a good schedule next week. Like we talked about Anaheim. You could grab an Anaheim guy. If you could get Mason McTavish, for example, get his game for today versus Nashville. And then you'll also still get, like I said, three games next week on off days. So if you can make it through, then you kind of get the best of both worlds. So one of those Anaheim guys is someone I would consider targeting. But if you just want to like the person who I think has gives you the best chance, I mean, kind of hard to ignore Alex Killorn over on Tampa Bay. He's still available in a lot of leagues. He's been playing on the top power play with Stamkos, Kucherov, and Point. Stamkos apparently injured today, so we'll have to get an update. We'll talk about him on the mega show on Sunday. But yeah, he's someone that is interesting to me. Uh, looking at some other guys who might be available to you. I mean, Winnipeg plays Tampa, and Nino Niederreiter has been hot for a while uh, since he's gone to his new destination. So if he's still out there, I know Mikhail Backlund, someone I've liked for a while, he went cold for a while, but that's just good news, right? Because that means he's likely been dropped, and you can grab him for his game against Ottawa. That's happening today. I definitely still like Backlund. He already scored in his last game on Friday, so he's hot again, and he had five shots. And my reason I like Backlund is just almost every game we're looking at five or four shots. There's a really good chance. So he would be a great Sunday save your pick i think if he's out there barrett hayton over on arizona available in a lot of leagues he continues to roll on that line with keller and schmaltz uh he's got points down three straight games four points in his last three games so yeah i definitely like barrett hayton as an option i've seen a lot of times you just want to go for a goalie so i'll leave it to you to see like i wonder if jonathan quick gets his third start in four days you know he just shut out the carolina hurricanes which is super impressive i'm gonna go with jonathan quick and this is after beating tampa and now he'll go against st louis on Sunday, either him or it's going to be this guy named Yuri Patera, who's currently the backup because everyone else is injured. So if you want to go, or Kachikov, by the way, probably even better options against New Jersey. Scary team, but he's been really good. He's coming off a shutout himself. So as far as goalies go, I don't know. There's so many names, right? Jason Zucker is heated up a lot late. He's been scoring like crazy. So if he's still available in your free agency, I like him versus the Rangers who probably aren't going to play Shostjorkin because Shostjorkin played today. So he goes against an easier Halak. So he can be someone, I guess I need to find someone like lower percent rostered just to give you someone like, I mean, I don't know. What about one of those Nashville guys? Nashville plays Anaheim who knows how to let in some goals. If you could get maybe like a Novak or a Tomasino, you know, I'm looking, I'm just trying to give you some names of players who are like really low rostered and maybe one of them will be interesting to you. So, I mean, honestly, you, if you're fighting and you need to win this week to make the playoffs, that means you kind of know what you're doing. And it's not like we're picking from scraps here. You've got a lot of options. Like take a look at all your available players who are playing on Sunday, sort by like, points over their last 14 days see who's like hot lately then of the players who are hot go to their lines in their last few games or like look at game day tweets and see who they're projected to be playing with for today's game get someone in a good spot that's hot that's that's what i generally go for that's what i like you know top power play would be great if you get top six and top power play even better and that should be a recipe for success. So good luck to everyone, both winning this week and then making it into your fantasy playoffs and doing 
well in week one. Hopefully, my picks and my pointing out which teams are playing a lot for you on those off days will be enough to get you through so that you'll be excited to come listen next Sunday when we look at the semifinals, at least in the cupful. And obviously, yeah, for the cupful especially, good luck to everyone and congrats to anyone who made the playoffs. It's not easy. I'm in tier one. I am not definitely not making the playoffs. I am uh, fighting it right now. If I can win today and Lewis loses to Matt, then I avoid coming in 13th or 14th and I make the consolation playoffs. So I get to fight to, you know, still try to rank seventh when it's all said and done. So go Matt. I'm sorry, Lewis. I'm, I'm definitely cheering for you to lose. Uh, but okay, that's it for me. I've uh, got a big Sunday show coming up that I'm going to now start getting to work on some more. Uh, so definitely make sure you're subscribed to Keeping Carlson to get that. And then, of course, there'll be short shifts next week, which you'll need to be up to speed You know, during your fantasy playoffs. You don't want to miss any important news or notes. And Jeremy, Shams, and Lewis will be there for you for two great short shifts episodes, just like they've been all season long. So, all right. Thanks again. See you all. And keep on maximizing. Hope you win those matchups. Bye.